Domino's Pizza has reported earnings mixed results coming out of them, and they are down 12.75% early this morning. This company is down a lot. A 12.8% dip is nothing to laugh about in a singular day. They're shaving off a lot of market cap. This is a company that's been growing very, very fast. It's an iconic pizza company. Um, it's a very fast dividend growth business. I mean, they've been growing the dividend at over a 15% CAGR for a while, and they have a dividend yield of a good 1.5% around, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower. But Domino's Pizza, incredibly struggling right now, right after this earnings report. We're going to cover the earnings report, the status of the business, just overall what I think about Domino's, what I'm doing with it in my portfolio, if I, I don't have it in my portfolio, but if I'm going to add it, um, and if you want to hear all of that stuff, please stick around. And before we get into it, let's roll the intro. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every time. I make investing content and my channel is Dividend Dude. You should leave a like and subscribe if you're going to enjoy the video. A disclaimer, this is not financial advice. I am just a dividend growth investor trying to share my takes on dividend growth stocks and various other stocks. This is not financial or investment advice, and always do your own due diligence before investing. Here, so we have an earnings summary here by Seeking Alpha um, by one of the news editors here. And you can see the revenue uh, coming in at 1.09, um, and, and the consensus was 1.1 billion, come at, came in at 1.09 billion, and it was a slight miss, but gap earnings per share coming in at $4.03, beating that consensus of $3.68 by a wide margin. Comp store, uh, same store sales growth, 4.8% versus a consensus 4.92%, so a miss there. International same store sales growth coming in at 2.1%, um, so a beat on because they had a consensus of 0.9%. So the company, honestly, from just this, does not look like a bad earnings report, but what caused the stock to drop so much is the um, long-term guidance they gave and the, their uh, key comments in terms of what they talked about in the earnings call. They talked about lowering their projected store count growth, global net store growth of 175. They talked about lowering it. Yeah, see, the company continues to expect 175 plus net stores annually uh, for 2024 to 2028. Uh, international. Here's where this earnings drop is somewhat justified, I guess. The company expects it will fall 175 to 275 stores below its 2024 goal of 925 plus net stores added. The company repurchased and retired 56,372 shares of common stock, so some buybacks totaling $25 million, and they have a lot of money left on their share buyback plan. So this company is also buying back shares at current prices which honestly i don't know how to feel because i really don't think the company is that cheap so i don't know if these buybacks are too value or creative for the shareholder but here is where we get to the part where it's justified somewhat is the company um right here this part right here international the company expects it will fall 175 to 275 stores below its 2024 goal that is honestly why the company is down so much but let's go and analyze the financials of the company and see what big and how big of an impact this is, how the company is doing on a financial standpoint, the valuation of the business after this drop. Let's go and do all that. So we have the company here, like I said, down 12.4%. Um, and year to date, though, the company is still barely up in the past year. The company is still up 21.43%. In the past five years, this company is still seen 64% of price appreciation. In the past 10 years, seen 458.5% of price appreciation for Domino's Pizza. Now, Domino's Pizza is a, is at a hefty valuation, a forward PE of 29.6 for a company like this. We're going to have to see some incredible growth metrics from Domino's to justify this forward price to earnings ratio, sitting on a dividend yield of 1.3%. We can take a look at the financials of Domino's Pizza, and their revenues do look strong. They have been growing year over year over year, although in the past two years, the revenues have actually kind of flattened. If we look at this at a year over year growth perspective, we could see uh, revenue kind of growing slower as the years go on. We started off with double digit revenue growth and then it went to single digits and now it's contracting a little bit in the most recent year, which is definitely not a good thing. I do want to see revenues reaccelerate for this business. We can take a look at the cash flow statement of Domino's net income has grown as well, but here's the same problem. We have 
it flattening as well. If we look at year over year growth rates, obviously discounting COVID, but we do have revenues flattening, contracting in 2023. So that is obviously not a good thing either. Now, the biggest intrinsic value driver of a business is the free cash flow per share of the business. And luckily for Domino's, this has been growing quite nicely. Um, during COVID, obviously a dip and it's still slightly less than 2022, but 2024, we should see a all time high in free cash flow per share. So Domino's Pizza, honestly, okay, financial metrics and historicals. Um, they are consistent revenue, income, and free cash flow metrics. And now we can analyze the company's dividend. We take a look at Domino's dividend of 1.3% and a payout ratio of just 33.55% means the company pays out only a third of its cash flows to that dividend. And they've been growing the dividend at an incredibly fast 17.8% compound annual growth rate. They have a dividend growth history of 10 years. And we can take a look at their dividend history where over the past 10 years, they've gone from paying 25 cents to a dollar and 51 cents in dividends. So over 5xing how much they pay in dividends over the past 10 years. Really, really impressive stuff right there. We could start looking at the valuation of the business, where I like to look at the dividend yield of the business. I could also look at the free cash flow yield here. Free cash flow yield of the business is sitting at 3%. So a little bit expensive, but honestly, maybe fair for Domino's Pizza. We do have to get a little bit more into it. We can see the dividend yield of the current business over the past 10 years is actually on the higher range of where it sits at. Over the past five years, it's probably at about the average range of where it sits at. But, you know, uh, to buy a business like this, you want to see a higher dividend yield. Um, so, so you're buying it at the higher end of its historical range. Dividend yield right here, obviously, is sitting at around the average. So nothing too crazy there. We can take a look at the valuation of Domino's Pizza, where like I said, to me, it looks expensive. 31 price to earnings ratio and a 29.6 forward price to earnings ratio. And on a cash flow basis, 27.5 price to cash flow and 21.03 price to forward cash flow is a little bit expensive. Let's see their earnings per share growth estimates. So we have consensus earnings per share estimate growth rates, 9%, 13%, 11% and 7.5%. So we're going to see high single digits to low double digits earnings per share growth from this business in the next four to five years. Now, does that justify a 29.6 uh, forward price to earnings ratio? I really don't think so. You could compare to a company like Starbucks at a 20 or 19 forward price to earnings ratio for long-term growth estimates in the mid-teens, which is obviously a lot more realistic. I think this company is still rather pricier even after the earnings drop. On a free cash flow basis, it does look a little bit better, but it's still pricey for double digit, let's say low double digit growth rates for 11, 12% earnings per share growth. Even if they do beat this fiscal next year estimate, it's still pretty expensive. It's not a cheap company by any means. And this is also a company that has a good amount of debt on their balance sheet, $5.2 billion of debt, only $204 million in cash for a $16.5 billion company. And that's at a stretched valuation. They have a lot of debt obligations that they do have to deal with. And uh, to put that in perspective, $5.2 billion of debt, we could take a look at how much free cash flow this company generates on a yearly basis. You can see they generate about $557 million of free cash flow in 2023. So $5 billion, they'd have to generate that cash flow for 10 years to fully pay off this debt. This debt is a lot of debt, and it honestly does factor into my valuation. Um, and I think that makes the company even more expensive. If we look at it on an EV basis, the company becomes even more expensive. An enterprise value basis, it becomes even more expensive. So... You know, for me, I think the company's way too expensive. I have had to, I'd have to see a bigger pullback. But, you know, uh, for you, you might see a different thing. I mean, over the past 10 years, this company's been able to grow cash flows, uh, free cash flows at 16%, 14% over the past five years. In terms of earnings per share, they've been able to grow it at a 19.4% over the past 10 years and 12.4% over the past five years. So, like I said, Company to me seems a little expensive. They may have some issues going forward in terms of sale uh, store count, but you know, uh, for you, you may think the company is fairly valued here. I'm going to be holding off on buying. I'm still buying a company like Starbucks right here, way over uh, Domino's Pizza. I think Domino's Pizza valuation is way too high for the growth and business you are getting.
Thank you guys for watching that video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. Join my Discord. We're building a community of like-minded investors. And make sure to follow my Twitter slash X as I do post quite consistently on there. Thank you guys. Peace.